Welcome back to the Justin Lee Collins Show. A wise man once said, does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> well, I know one that does, and a whole lot more besides. Please welcome Bear Grylls. Gosh, always, always scary. <laughs> really? Yeah. This yeah. can't be scary. Look at that. I get much, much more nervous doing this sort of stuff. Why? Well, I kind of been brought up messing around in mountains and jumping off stuff, and you know, this is much scarier. It can't be. It's not. <laughs> climbing mountains, climbing Everest is scary. Being lifted up by a chopper is scary. Eating elephant shit <laughs> is both <laughs> scary and unpleasant, Bear. And you do all of these things. Why? Uh, I think the honest answer is it's been the only thing I've ever been good at in my life. You know, I was start, taught to climb by my dad when I was really small. And I think at that age it was my way of being close to him. You know, if I had to be, wanted to be close to him, I had to climb. And, and that's kind of the world I grew up in. And then when I left school, I joined the army. Uh, I spent three years with the Special Forces then. And, you know, I did all the climbing and the skydiving and the combat survival stuff. And it's all just... I've just always loved messing around, climbing trees, being caked in mud. And um, I feel really lucky to have a job that involves exactly that. What is it about, though, Bear? Because, of course, there are those of us who would never entertain the idea, we never want to, to do anything like that. And there are others, like yourself, of course, who that's what life is all about. What's the motivation? Uh, what is it that you get out of doing something like that? I think I've just got less brain cells than you for a start. Probably. <laughs> but I, I, I genuinely love it. It's what drives me. It's where I thrive. It's where I come alive. You know, I sometimes f find these sort of, um, you know, the big city's quite intimidating and lots of meeting lots of new people you don't know. And I, I get genuinely, I get quite nervous going to sort of uh, drinks parties with loads of people I don't know. But, you know, I find that side of things scary, like I said at the start, you know, here. But... I come alive in small groups of people, of people I know and love and trust, and we're, you know, it's what I had with my job with the SAS, you know, small groups of people, people we work with a lot, you know, we work well under pressure, we know how each other react, and I thrive in that sort of environment, and you have the same sort of camaraderie and big expeditions, and, and that's more my world. You know, today, I've, we, we kind of, that's why I'm dressed up like this, is why I've, I've started taking over as a chief scout for all the scouts worldwide, and this I'll is what this. the scouts are about, it's about... That's very kind. But Bear, surely you don't get young scouts coming up to you saying, Bear, I saw you drinking dung on TV last night. <laughs> How do I do that? No, 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 that, that is true. <laughs> but, um... Because you, know, you did also, do that. Well, the thing is that you don't need to go to the extremes. Well, you don't need to go to the extremes, but you do. Always. Why? Well, that, you know, you? that's kind of what the show is. And, you know, Channel 4 came to me and they said, you know, and Discovery Channel, and they said, could we drop you in some of these places? We know your background, we know what you've been trained to do, and just show us some of the ways you get out of basically worst-case scenarios. And, um, and I thought, I thought, oh, that sounds fun, but I kind of didn't really want to do TV, TV. And the producer came, and he came back three times. I kept saying no, and I didn't want to be a smiley TV presenter. was sort of, you know... And I... <laughs> Not that you're, you're not a smiley, you're a bearded TV designer. I never smile. I never smile. I've got nothing to smile about, Barry. <laughs> so I said no, but he said, look, and the more I said that, the more he said, we don't want that. We want the dirt, the mutt, the real, the raw, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I said, undo bits of that. And, and we went and we, we had a blast. I was jumping out of planes and ra racing rapids in the rivers and catching snakes and, you know, climbing up cliffs and, you know, improvising big sort of tyranny and traverses across canyons and I, you know, it was everything I loved. Why don't we take a look <laughs> of a clip of you having a blast whilst drinking... That, you're, talk us through it, Bear. Are you extracting elephant piss through elephant dung? What is it you're doing? 
I was told by an old ranger when I was working in Africa helping with the anti-poaching years ago, and he said, if you're ever in a really in the shit, you know, if everything's gone wrong, you've got nothing, you've got no water, elephants have very fast digestion, and if you can get the turds when they're fresh out of its backside and it's still got the moisture in it, you can squeeze it, it's not going to be 100% sterile, but it is drinkable and it's going to rehydrate you. We have to look at this clip. It's, it's upsetting, <laughs> but it's also fascinating. Have a look at this. One thing you can do if you're stuck out here with no water source at all is actually drink the fluid from a fresh elephant dung. Pretty disgusting, but it could save your life. <laughs> there can be harmful bacteria in that water, but if you have nothing else to drink, it could buy you extra time. Not one of the better drinks I've ever had. Ben, did that not make you ill afterwards? Um, no, I mean, you know, on the whole, the advice is, is there because it's, it's there for a purpose, which is, you know, it's going to save your life and shouldn't make you sick. I mean, sometimes it goes wrong. We were filming in Africa recently and I'd eaten a bit of a dodgy snake the day before and... Um, <laughs> It was the next day and I was halfway up this like 100 foot waterfall and I just felt the diarrhoea coming on and you know, you know what's like and when it comes it comes and you know with the greatest will and willpower in the world it's hard to stop and, um, and I remember I was up this thing and I was held and the camera was roped above me and he was filming and, and I was up and I said look just flip the camera off I've got to go and I was hanging there with one hand trying to get my trousers down a leg jammed on this rock and um, and I was basically doing it in the free air, you know, and it was... Yeah. <laughs> everything, everything was running, you know. And I just thought... And the camera at Simon goes, you've got to be joking, I'm not turning the camera on, this is gold dust. And I think, there's nothing sacred, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and sure enough, that, I, I think they never put that in, and, and sure enough, you know... They did? Yeah. But it doesn't Sorry. often happen, you know. I kind of generally okay. But in that moment, I love. In that moment, <laughs> were you thinking to yourself, "I wish to God I hadn't eaten that snake." Yeah, but I, you know, I ate a lot of snakes, and they're kind of, you know, nine out of ten are great, you know. <laughs> and I caught a big boa constrictor recently, big ten foot one here to the camera, you know, over there, and it was like a whopper that thick, and that gets round you, it just squeezes the breath out of you and breaks every bone in your body before eating you, and. Um, and this thing was, you know, it was striking, and I was trying to get around the back of it. I got its tail, and I'm holding it up, and, you know, its head's around a root, and out of desperation, it just squirts pee and poo all over me. I was going, ah, oh, well, you know. <laughs> and um, anyway, it was, it was good. It was dinner, you know, eventually, and we got the better of it, and then that was... Um... <laughs> so I kind of do... Uh, I... <laughs> can, we just, can we just go back? It was dinner. Well, that's a shortened version of the story. What, Barrett, what's the closest you've ever come to death? Has there been a moment in your life so far when you've thought, that's it, I've had it? I did jump on top of a 16-foot man eating tiger shark by mistake once. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that by mistake? How does that happen by mistake? OK, what was that? I was on a raft, OK, and there was sand... I was filming, there were sandbar sharks deep down in the water, and they're pretty harmless. Had a little camera, was diving down, I was filming them, saying, you know, sandbar sharks, you know, watch this, bosh, going down. Got out, and then um, I thought, I'll just get, I'll try and get another shot of this. And I, I grabbed the camera, jumped, and literally as I jumped, straight under the raft at that sort of depth, was his head that big, going straight under the raft, this big, t you know, 60 foot tiger shark, and I actually I hit it, landed on it, and it was so surprising, you know, it darted away. I, like, vaulted out of the water. <laughs> One of the few occasions that I have peed myself for real. <laughs> yeah, literally, I was just, oh, God, you know. <laughs> it's, a... it's, not a great, it's not a great... It's not a great thing to do, but, you know, you could sometimes... Anyway. And I'm, I'm, I'm shaking and shaking like this, and the thing came back and it was circling and it was pissed off and it was hitting a tail on the thing, and I was on this raft, like, you know, twice the size of this table, just, you know. And, um, and after about ten minutes, it got bored and, and swam away, but that was... Um... What do you do in that yeah, situation, that was, that aside from piss yourself? <laughs> what do you well, do? Well, you know, not, not much else. Well, do you, you just kind of pray and hope and... Um... Jesus Christ! <laughs> that was a while ago, that was a couple of years ago now. And, 
you know, I try and be a bit safer nowadays. One last question for you, Barry. I could talk to you all night, Jen. It's fascinating, isn't it? Um, what terrifies you? What's your line? Is there something so far a challenge that you face and you've just said, do you know what, I don't need to do this, and you've turned away? No, I think um, what I've learnt is that I need ten lifetimes to scrape the surface of the adventures and the stuff I love to do. And, um, and I love life. I, I try and grab it, and, and yes, I get scared sometimes, but um, this is a world I love. It's the only thing I can do well, you know? So um, I hope God willing to keep doing this sort of stuff for a bit. What's the most unpleasant thing you've ever put in your mouth? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, there was that girl in our broth once, is there? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.